I'm Dr. Orion Taraban, and this is Psychax, Better Living Through Psychology. And the topic of today's short talk is why time seems to move faster as we age. This was something that had long been mysterious to me, but today I'm going to share my personal theory with respect to why this is the case. I believe that the subjective acceleration of the passage of time is largely a consequence of the overuse of top-down cognitive heuristics as we age. Okay, let's do a quick review of what all that means. So, there's kind of two ways that human beings can perceive reality. We can perceive it bottom-up, or we can perceive it top-down. What does that mean? Bottom-up processing means that we form our perceptions of reality from raw sensory data collection, with few to no preconceptions of what we are perceiving. Children, for instance, can't help but be bottom-up processors, Since they've never encountered much of what they're experiencing before, they don't have many preconceptions of that phenomena. That's why, when they're presented with something new, they try to get as much raw sensory information as they can. They look at it from different angles, they smell it, they put it in their mouth, they throw it around, they rattle it next to their ears. Children are very curious about novel phenomena. This allows children to have, let's say, a more direct experience with reality than most adults. And this is partly why children tend to be more emotional than adults, as the experience of reality in adults is mediated through their conceptual frameworks, which tends to remove them somewhat from direct contact with reality, mitigating their emotional responsiveness. However, since children tend to lack those conceptual frameworks, Their sensory experience is translated directly into emotional reactivity without any mitigating factors. Over time, however, humans kind of can't help but rely more and more on top-down processing. We get better at perceiving reality, so we need less raw sensory data from which to extrapolate our conceptual frameworks. Most adults aren't really paying attention. They're just paying enough attention for their top-down processing to kick in, after which the blanks left by an absence of sensory data are filled in with what they expect to experience. In this way, most adults are not generally engaging with reality, but with their own extrapolated models of reality generated through top-down processing. This allows them to move through life more or less on autopilot, which most human beings are doing. Don't believe me? Just go to the grocery store and look around. Most people are just going through the motions, but their minds are somewhere else entirely. And this is a fascinating phenomenon because, like, these are their lives. People will fight for one more day of life, but they're not even present for that life most of the time. Why wouldn't people pay more attention? Well, before I answer that question, if you're liking what you're hearing, please consider sending this video to someone who might benefit from its message because it's word of mouth referrals like this that really help to make the channel grow. And you can also hit the super thanks button and tip me in proportion to the value you feel you've received from this episode. I really appreciate your support. Well, the reason why people increasingly adopt a top-down processing style is because it saves so much time and energy relative to bottom-up processing. Think about it. It would be really, really hard to get anything done if we approached every phenomenon like an infant. Action would be difficult and inefficient if we had to reinvent the wheel at every moment because we weren't able to make certain perceptual assumptions. This isn't a conscious choice. The mind just kind of decides to take shortcuts so it can free up those cognitive resources for other tasks. This is top-down processing. Now, it's my theory that the expenditure of cognitive resources is related to the subjective experience of time. I think we all kind of understand this relationship from a purely mechanistic perspective, like when does time move more quickly? When you're relaxing on the couch or sprinting on the treadmill? Well, I think the same is true with respect to cognitive resources, meaning the fewer cognitive resources are applied to processing less information, the faster time seems to progress. In this way, a night's sleep can seem to pass in a few moments of unconsciousness, 
and those who fall into a coma are often shocked to learn that months or years have passed. These, of course, are extreme examples, but they do accord with the general rule. Level of cognitive processing is inversely correlated with the subjective passage of time. Another extreme example that illustrates this is a near-death experience. This is because almost everyone can be jolted instantaneously into bottom-up processing by the sudden imposition of novelty or danger. This has been the case in my own experience. I've had a couple of near-death experiences in my life, one of which involved getting swept up in a river crossing in Kings Canyon National Park. Time was flowing regularly, like it always did, until the instant I lost my feet and I was swept up in the currents. Instantly, time slowed dramatically, like the river was barely moving. I could see drops of water suspended in midair as they arced across the sky, while the internal experience of my thoughts remained unchanged. I felt like I had all this time to take in my situation and make a decision as to how best to get out of it, though I imagine the whole experience only lasted a few seconds. This was not something that I consciously did. I had just never been swept up by a river before. So the novelty of that experience effortlessly switched me over to bottom-up processing, which allowed me to pay very close attention to the actual experience circumstances I was in. Not the circumstances I thought I was in, but the actual circumstances I was in. And that perceptual overdrive slowed down my experience of time. And this seems to be a common experience among those who have passed through similar situations. So how do we combat the acceleration of the subjective passage of time without risking our lives? Well, in the first place, you might consider responsibly injecting some danger into your life. I made an episode on that a long time ago. Increasing the stakes generally wakes people up. However, another way to do this is to practice mindfulness. You can do this in a sitting meditation, but the stuff of your life is actually better material for mindfulness practice. You can practice while you're working. You can practice while you're driving. You can even practice while you're at the grocery store. This is because mindfulness is functionally a bottom-up processing exercise in which you learn to pay closer attention to the actual moment-to-moment -moment experience of your consciousness for longer periods of time. The more you practice mindfulness, the more you will train your mind to be able to flexibly adopt a bottom-up processing modality, which should slow the subjective experience of time. Finally, you can experiment with doing less. Time moves faster the busier you are. There are a lot of people out there who are shocked, shocked that it's May already and we're almost halfway through 2023 and where does that time go? The biggest enemy of mindfulness is not laziness, it's not ignorance, it's busyness. And busyness is the decision to mistake the 10,000 insignificant things that you have to do every day as actually important. Be real with yourself. Is anyone going to die if that doesn't get done? Is the world going to fall apart? Choose busyness as a lifestyle and your life will pass you by. I guarantee it. Therefore, to combat the acceleration of the subjective passage of time, you will want to increase the amount of time spent utilizing more of your cognitive resources in bottom-up processing. You can do this by increasing danger or challenge, improving your mindfulness practice, and combating busyness in your day-to-day -day life. Do this and you'll have twice as much life without living an extra day. What do you think? Does this fit with your own experience? let me know in the comments below. And if you've gotten this far, you might as well like this episode and subscribe to this channel. You may also consider becoming a channel member with perks like priority review of comments or booking a paid consultation. As always, thank you for listening.